Hi, this is Linda West with Living Live, and today I am with Aaron Garcia and Veronica Mendez. And before we get started, um, I want to share with you guys something that this is going to be 100% real and raw. This is potentially, I'm already getting emotional just thinking about it. <laughs> this is potentially going to be a moment in my life where I'm looking back and saying, wow, did you really do that? You know, that was scary, but you did it anyway, which is my platform is working through fears. So this is going to be really, really cool. So I wanted to start by saying that if you know anybody who might be interested in seeing the show, please share this on your timeline, share it with them. Um, I'm not into like tagging the whole world or anything, but you know, sharing it is great. That would be fantastic. And then lastly, before we get started, go to stigelaticket.com if you're interested in seeing me speak on stage at Massive Success Breakthrough, which is February 9th through 11th in San Diego. I'm super excited because this is the first time I'll be speaking on a big stage. Like I've spoken, but never on a big stage. So this is a really big deal to me. And I'd love to have you guys there with me. So I'm here with, um, with Aaron Garcia and Veronica Mendez. And who are they? I'm going to share that with you right now. So Veronica is an intuitive healer with a unique ability to feel the energy and emotions of others. She uses this ability to help others release deep, ener deep emotional energy that they hold on to. And then Dr. Aaron Garcia has a background in chiropractic with a specialty in neuro-emotional healing. Together, they help release the emotional blockages that keep people from achieving what they want in life. They go deep into the subconscious mind using a unique process that gets to the core issues and releases stuck emotional energy. They combine their talents as a team working with and educating clients from all over the world. They've been able to help people overcome phobias, PTSD, chronic pain, anxiety, relationship problems, business and financial challenges, and weight issues. So if you have any of those, which probably most of us do. You guys really want to tune in and see what we're going to talk about today. So first, welcome Aaron, Aaron and Veronica. I'm so glad to have you guys and excited to find out where you take me down this path. Thank you for having us. Linda. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We're excited. Well, one of the first things I know we're going to talk about is, um, well, uh, first I want to ask Aaron, you, you're a chiropractor and then you've made this transition um, going into working with Veronica with you know, doing the healing and stuff. So how did you make that transition and why, I guess, really would be a, a more interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my career, um, I started off in my, my practice working out of a actual holistic wellness hospital in Mexico for about two and a half years. I had the opportunity to work a lot with you know, chronic disease uh, patients from cancer, MS, autoimmune disorders, you name it. Um, I've seen it. And really, in my training that I did outside of school, I really understood how the emotional component really affected the physical body and, and health and how it can manifest. So I did a lot of training in that. And when I came to start my own practice uh, here in, in San Diego, uh, I was doing a lot more of that with people. I got certified, learned more about that with my experience. And then uh, we were gonna bounce them back and forth through offices when I first started my practice. And when I we finally got our own office together after Veronica and I met, it was interesting because I was working with patients and Veronica was is sitting in with us and just taking notes or hanging out. And she would look at me like, you know what? I, they got like this. I feel like this pain right here on my side or my jaw. It's like, she's like, check them and see what's there. And I would go and explore that. And it was, it was there. I'm like, okay, that's something that I missed that mm. I, I was doing my own thing intuitively what I wanted to look for. And she was almost spot on most of the time. And we kept doing that. And people just loved having her around because of the energy. And so we said, why don't we, why don't we just stop me going through all these, you know, processes? Let's really tune in on this. And so Veronica, uh, we started doing this stuff together. And then we were, I was doing a lot of the emotional work that I was doing with, with clients. And, and I can also see Veronica would actually feel what they were feeling before they were even consciously aware of it. Yeah. So I would, I would start to cry before they even knew what was going on. It's like a vibration that gets emitted by the body and I'm able to pick up on it before their brain even registers that this is the issue. So it was interesting. And as we started to re help people release all this, it was interesting because it's, their pains would start to go away almost instantly without us even doing physical work on them. Mm -hmm. But not only that, but we found that a lot of the challenges that were being caused physically was being was stemming from 
something that was going on uh, at home. Maybe they were having relationship problems. Maybe they were having, uh, you know, worried about money or they were uh, really having a lot of self-esteem issues or anything that can go on in someone's life. And mm-hmm. because they didn't have an outlet to release all that, they stuffed it all. And when you stuff that kind of energy, it's going to manifest and go somewhere and it can show up as physical pain. It can show up as a health issue, et cetera. And so we realized that when we released that, people were actually doing better in their personal life. So we brought a little bit of that personal development capacity to it. And we just loved that aspect so much. And we were really doing our own processing, trying to figure out what we wanted to really do in our life. And so we just, you know, let's bring our and work our talents together. And we just transitioned in doing this, the, the emotional work solely for people. We stepped out of the, the chiropractic because we love doing the emotional work with people so much. And, and we just got a lot of great feedback from it. So that's kind of how we started as Aaron and Veronica. We did our show and it, it's been been a blast ever since. Well, that's that's really awesome. But you know, I want to ask then Veronica. So mm-hmm. when did you first discover that you had this ability or that you were, is it called an empath? Is there a name to it? I guess would be the first question I have. Yeah, some people call it uh, empath, and that's being able to feel other people's emotions. And I also feel the aches and pains within their body. So I know what areas, um, I guess, need attention. And I I started Reiki in 2011. I got trained and certified in that. And I found out when working with people, I would start to get pains in my body. And so I would ask, is there anything going on here? Uh, you know, in this part of your body, and they and they would tell me, "Oh, yeah, this happened." And uh, so then I'm like, "Ah, uh-huh, I, I can feel the pain in people's body." And before, um, I guess I wasn't as aware. There was a lot going on in my childhood where I think I blocked a lot of my own emotions and stuffed a lot. Um, mm-hmm. But there was a lot of uh, traumatic things that happened to me as a child, and I. I ended up having to stuff a lot of my emotions. So now so, it's like an uh, overload. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, how, do how do you deal, deal with that? Because, because you, you are, are working with working people, people and, and experiencing, experiencing their emotions. Their and then wait, hold on a second. I'm getting some feedback. So let me put my headphones on. Okay. Um, so you're working with people and you're taking on their emotions. How does that affect you? not only emotionally, but physically, how does that affect you? You know, I, uh, working with Aaron, I've worked a lot on myself. So I've, I've, uh, done a lot of emotional work on myself and that, that really helps a lot because it keeps me in a uh, positive mindset in order to help other people. So if I'm, you know, feeling down, it's, um, I'd say it probably, it would probably affect me more and drain me, but I, since I've worked on myself so much, I just allow the emotion to flow through and out and I don't hold on to it because uh, sometimes yeah. people can that, get triggered. Yeah. By yeah. other people's stuff. Yeah. That's interesting. So you're, you're able to be like a conduit, right? Where it yeah. just, it goes in and out and you're able to, so you not only help them with their healing, but you don't hold on to whatever it is. Cause I would imagine that that would make a person go kind of bonkers yeah. And all of a sudden they're taking on everybody's like stuff, you know, yeah. like there's there's a lot of stuff out there. Right. <laughs> well, as a kid, that's what I thought. Everything I was feeling was all mine. But I I think oh. I was feeling my mom, my sisters, my brother with all the, the stuff happening at home. And I there was points in my life where I didn't want to be around anymore. It was too much. So it was um, I, I learned to work through that as I got older and learn, you know, new techniques and things like that. That's so awesome. And so Reiki, can you explain to us for those who don't know what that is? Reiki is using uh, source energy to help heal people. So I, I am able to to just take in the energy and send it to any part of the body or the whole body. And it I can do it long distance as well. And that's how I can tap into your energy and be able to send you healing energy while we're working on the blocks or anything. So do you have to, this might be a weird question, but do you have to be aware that it's happening or just does it just happen 24 seven wherever you are? Uh, a lot of it is, is uh, the intention as well, because uh, it's focusing the energy to the person and sending it 
you know, directly to the person. Um, okay. But that's why it's important to stay in a positive mindset, because if you have any anything going on in, in your mind and, and you're just not in the right headspace, um, I believe it kind of blocks that that channel. So it, it's good to clear yourself and stay grounded while working with another person. OK. OK, so what we're going to do today, I have no idea, but <laughs> but I'm. I'm really um, excited to see what it is. So that was kind of like the background of like what you guys do, how Aaron got into working with you. And I'm finding myself getting emotional already. Ron probably already noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> because I have no idea what we're going to do. So this is kind of like a fear. Like most people have fear. Their fear is of the unknown because we don't know what's about to happen. And we don't know how to like uh, work through that fear is a lot of times what happens. So whatever fear I'm having right now, I'm going to just let it go and realize that whatever you're going to do with me, I know I'm safe. I'm in a very safe environment. And I know that um, anybody watching, um, if they are judgmental, that's okay because that doesn't affect me. And, but I do know that most of the people that are in my sphere of influence are very supportive people and will not judge me. So I don't have any fear of judgment, which used to be one of my biggest fears, by the way, huge, huge fear. And so I don't have that fear. And uh, I don't know what my fear is right now. But maybe you know what it is. <laughs> but we, we talked about working on my fear of success. But I think something else came up the other day when you guys were interviewing me. And so I just I am open to whatever happens here. Just let me put it that way. I'm totally 100 percent open to wherever this goes. And um, I have my tissue and I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I have mine too. <laughs> so fun. Do you want to dive into it? You want to just like go yeah. right into it? Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll give a little context uh, ahead of time. So, okay, good. The, the way we like to work with everybody is when, when they're sitting with us one on one, like we're doing right now, is we always got to figure out like what do they want first, right? We don't just go in and start working with somebody without them knowing what we're going to do. So, we gave you a little preamble of what we could work on. So, we had an, uh, um, a concept. And so, maybe you guys are watching, you, you've you've maybe felt stuck in certain areas of your life. Like we've been talking about Linda's a fear kicks in. You've been wanting to do something, but why haven't I been able to do that? Or why do I keep attracting these same situations in my life over and over again? Is it because there's an emotional pattern that keeps showing up that hasn't been dealt with yet. And you carry that energy. And if we can release that energy of it and identify where that came from, then we can shift by law of attraction Put, point you in the right direction and keep you aligned with what it is that you want. And so mm. what we're going to do is we're really going to be talking to your subconscious mind. The way we're going to do that is we're actually going to do uh, muscle testing on our end. And that's how we like to really tap in and test. So imagine just like how we're having this conversation through a, a, a B live through Facebook. You know, we're not physically in person, but we can have this conversation with millions of people around the world. You know, that's an, that's an energy. That's a frequency frequency that's being sent out. And so since Veronica can feel everybody, I'm going to be testing her, but it's almost like I'm going to be testing you in person. Okay. And she's going to really just kind of feel your energy and we're going to test. I'll have you say a few phrases and we're going to say, say, I'm okay with this. We're going to see that's your subconscious mind saying it, all right? No, your conscious mind, but your subconscious mind will say whether that is that true. Do I want that or do I not want that? And that's the part of the mind that we're going to talk to is because that's where all your emotions sit. And that's okay. the programming that really runs the show. So we want to make sure that those two parts of your mind, the conscious and subconscious, are in alignment with each other. Okay. Before we get on with that, then, is um, so to make clear that you guys work with people over the Internet all the time. I mean, they yes. don't have to be in your presence because because um, we are energy. We're all made up of energy. And so what Veronica feels is the energy field. Is that yeah. Somewhat accurate. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because we all emit vibration. So so by him uh, having you say a statement and if you feel like nervous or, or whatever it is, I, I can feel that energy from you. So it okay. doesn't matter where where you're at. It it energy's instant and it can go anywhere. And I'll give a, just a quick example of how uh, if somebody doesn't understand that concept of how to understand that. And that's that, for example, 
Let's say you're watching a commercial, a Hallmark commercial. Well, you get very emotional over this Hallmark commercial. I do, at least. And you get very emotional. It's just energy. It's it's an energy that the commercial is actually emitting to you that has caused you to react in a certain way. So it's just energy. So that's how this works, too, I'm assuming. And I, I'm just making a lot of assumptions here. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to put it into like a term like because it just hit me that I'm, I'm very emotional and I don't have to be in person with the person I'm emotional with. So if I see a video that like really makes me angry, I get angry. If I see a video that makes me sad, I get sad. And there's all yeah. these emotions that are tied to that, that video that was put out there. And so what we're doing though, is we're doing live yeah. where you are actually tapping into me at the very moment that whatever it is, is happening. Yeah, and and uh, one thing I wanted to say about the commercials is so, sometimes when you're watching it, it, it's bringing up a trigger for you. Mm -hmm. So it, it, if there's something there that that's making you get angry, well, whatever's happening in that commercial could be um, a trigger of something that happened to you in the past, which this commercial is just bringing it up for you. So it's it's something maybe that that's still there that like in the background that triggers you. So that it could be an emotional trigger. Okay, so that begs another question from me. Is it possible to um, clear all of our triggers so that we no longer have emotion? I mean, I don't even know that's an accurate question, but, um, you know? it. I, I would say the emotion would still be there, but it won't, like, bring you down all day. Like, say something makes you depressed, like, Okay. If you're watching something, it's not going to bring you down the whole day and the, and also the way you react to it. So say you just get angry and you, you, you're you angry with the next person that, you know, that comes your way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's all how you react to it. So there's, you know, there's going to be times because we are all emotional where something will, you know, you'll feel it, but then you're not holding on to it. Where okay. other times you're holding on to it and it could ruin your day. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to get started. If you guys have any questions, um, thank you, Patty. Patty says, no judgment. We love you, Linda. I know. See, the people who I, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, connected with are just amazing people. I'm so fortunate. But if you guys have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the comments. If you want to encourage me, which I won't be looking at them during this, but if you want to encourage me or encourage, you know, Veronica and Aaron, Aaron, you know, do that. Or like I said, any questions, all the questions will be saved till the end. And um, they are more than happy to answer any questions you guys have. And we're trying to get this done. Like we're trying to stay within an hour, but we don't know what's going to happen. And we have yeah. both agreed that, you know, it might go longer. We just don't know. Okay. So okay. I'm taking a deep breath and I'm ready. I know the, the longer breath. I talk, the less time we get. <laughs> All right. All right. So again, emo emotional energy is real. I mean, you can feel that in your body. It's like you can almost feel like the heart palpitation. That's when people get this, like the sweats. It's like. You know, emotional energy is real energy. You can feel it and I mean, you, you, you can't hide it. And so what we want to do is when those types of triggers come up, your body doesn't respond in that way as as much as that's the way I want to put it. So we'll get to it as we go through it. OK, so the main thing with uh, the speaking, right, speaking at that event, is that the main thing you wanted to work on? You know, that I the success. Yeah, I know. Um, so let's do the speaking of the event because I feel like if we do the speaking of the event, that also will cover success. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sometimes things get wiped out, so we can yeah. start with that one. Well, okay, so we'll let, we'll let, let, let me move my that. let me move my dog for a second because she's okay. like right under my chair, and so pop up. You gotta move. You gotta move. Come on, girlfriend. So I can be comfortable. And okay, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> pop up, I'm ready too. All right. So we'll we'll test both of them. We'll see what shows up. So it's going to be like plain hot and cold, you know, truth, you know, it's like a, like a lie detector test. And so okay. I'm going to muscle test Veronica. So as an example, uh, I'm just going to test her here. It's like she's strong. And then I'll have you say something and then we'll test it. So I'm just going to check her, make sure she's open. So let, let's just check and I'll explain as I go. So we'll do the speaking engagement um, concept. Um, so Linda, what I'll have you do is say, I'm okay speaking on stage. I'm okay speaking on stage. Okay, you're actually, it actually shows that you're okay with that. And sometimes you'll notice it is that it shows up as, it feels confident to say that. Yes. When we hit an area that might be a trigger, you might notice like a pause or a hesitation or a, go ahead. Uh, how many people are expected to be at that event? Uh, we're shooting for 300. 
Okay. You okay. Say... So let's get more specific. I'm okay speaking <laughs> on stage in front of 300 people. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 300 people. Now, for those of you who are watching, <laughs> did you notice the quick little breath like, I'm okay speaking on So that's the little hesitation. It's like, okay, I have to really say this. So it's one thing if you spoke on stage and only one person was watching, but you put you in front of 300, different scenario. Let's see what your limit is as we're going through this. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 100 people. Okay. I'm, okay speaking, I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 100 people. Okay, so it's still triggered there. Let's keep going. Let's see what her limit is, Veronica. Okay, I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 50 people. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 50 people. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 10 people. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 10 people. Okay. 10 she's okay with. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 25 people. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 25 people. Okay. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 11 people. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 11 people. Okay, so 10 was the... 10's the, 10's the number before your physiology starts getting triggered. Okay. So anything over 10, it's like, okay, well, that, that's a little weird. Okay. But 10 would be your comfort zone. Let's put it that way. Okay, we need to make it at 300. <laughs> we need to make it 300. Like, make stat. It <laughs> make it 1,000. Oh, yeah, okay. Find the limit, ready? Yeah. Okay, so let's start with that. And before I go there, let's, we'll test the other one as well. Uh, I'm okay. I didn't want to say that. So what's success? Um, I'm okay being successful. Oh, there we go. I'm okay being successful. Okay. I'm uh, okay allowing myself to be successful. I'm okay allowing myself to be successful. Okay. And when we say success for you, Linda, is it uh, a successful speaker, a successful author, a combination of the all? Like, what would you consider? What, what is your goal? It's a combination of. Uh, speaking, author, um, motivational. So okay, we'll test those ones because everybody's okay. definition of success is different. So and, I'm okay. Well, yes, yeah, because it's hard to measure, right? Because I, my goal, my mission is to Im positively impact the lives of five million entrepreneur women. Uh, it's a great goal. So, so I'm okay being a successful speaker. Say that. I'm okay. I'm okay being a successful speaker. Okay, so that will be it. one we'll have to work on. I'm okay being a successful author. I'm okay being a successful author. Okay, so that's kind of where the, and that's how we would work. We're not going to get to all of them today. Okay. Uh, just, that would that would take us a, a lot more time. But you can see that when we test people on that is okay. Where would there be an incongruency? Where could there be like a a, a resistant type of energy? And we just clear that. So we're going to go back to the very first one, which was the 300 people. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, you're going to keep repeating. I'm okay being, I'm okay speaking in front of 300 people on stage. I'll have you repeat that until we tell you to stop. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and, and say that. I'm okay speaking in front of 300 people on stage. Okay. Keep going. I'm okay speaking in front of 300 people on stage. Okay. Okay, we got it. Okay. So you don't have to repeat, but we're gonna we're gonna tie in emotion with that scenario, okay? Okay. All right. So the concept of paralyzed will, fear, the concept of your fear. So fear, that's been our topic this whole time. How so how could there be a fear speaking in front of three hundred people from your perspective? What would be scary about that? Uh th that that I say something that I'm trying to put it into words that doesn't make sense um, that people see as uh, not smart. I mean, I want to use the word stupid because that was my ex-husband used to call me stupid every day. Ah, okay. So, so I'll, I'll paraphrase that and anything, if I, if we say anything and you would say, no, I would say it this way, just correct us. We, we, your words are more powerful than our words. Okay. As, again, it's, it's your subconscious. So the concept of your fear with speaking in front of 300 people is that you would say something stupid. Did I get that right? Yes. That concept. And let's just say you, there was something that you said and it just it came off as stupid. What about that would bother you the most? 
that my ex-husband's right. So to confirm that, can I take it, kind of, it would, from your perspective, it confirm that he's right? Yes. I think we can go there. So here's what okay. we're going to do for those who are watching the audience. Is that this is a pattern, as you said, it's something that your ex-husband used to say in the past, and it's a trigger for you. And it mm -hmm. hits you very emotionally. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so we're going to see if maybe it stems from there. But we also want to see maybe if it comes even earlier in your life where it got ingrained subconsciously. And that's the area that we really want to focus on. Okay. So I'm going to pose the concepts of an original event in your life in which you had this fear of looking or feeling stupid. So the concept from conception of 10, I'm already showing it, uh, conception of five, conception of four, conception of three, at age four, your fear at age four. So she can feel that somehow right now. Uh, so what, what happened at four years old or was there well, anything? Well, I remember, um, I shouldn't say I remember, but my mom told me that at age five, I ran away and I was gone for a whole week. And um, my, my dad was very abusive. He beat my mom a lot. And so there was the fear in the household. And we were always told um, kids are better seen than heard. So there's that heard part. And, but I was gone for a whole week. And um, I'm thinking that part of it had to do with my mom said that she called. I was gone to the neighbors. I only went one house away. But I ran away for a whole week. And she called the neighbor and said, um, you can send her home now. So I imagine as a five-year-old being gone for a week that I might have thought that my parents didn't care for me that they would let me be gone for a whole week. That's what I imagine. I don't know if that's the case. Well, think about that and I just want to test that. Okay, so we're getting we're getting warm. How did that feel? Uh, like I didn't have any purpose. Uh, you know, like I wasn't I wasn't valuable. I was unnecessary. That feeling, right? You can feel that, yes. Mhm. Mm and so that's, again, how things stem and go up to life. I don't even mean, have to test it. I think you can feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to, let's just acknowledge that energy, that feeling. So here's what we want you to do. Close your eyes because you're going to process. I want you to go back and you're, you're this young girl again. And you've gone and ran away to the neighbor's house. And you hear those words, you can send her back now. Everything when you feel like I don't matter whatever is going on through the mind of a four-year-old. And I'll be sending you healing energy as well from here. And I want you to feel that. And notice where you feel that in your body. And then take a big, deep breath in. And big breath out. So it's like right back there in that event, reliving that experience. Feeling the emotion with that. And I want you to breathe through it. And when you feel that sense of calmness in your body, you feel like you got it all out of your system. You just let us know when you're ready, but breathe to that until you get to that point. See the expressions on their face. Hear the words. There. There you go. Breathe. Let all that out. It's okay to let it go. That energy's been stuck. It wants to come out. Breathe in. The healing's in the breath, so focus on your breath.
Yeah. Right about there where you feel that your body's just a little more relaxed. The breathing kind of gets a little better. That's, that's when you know you've got that processed. Unless you feel like there's more, you let us know. And there might be. Yeah, I, can't, about that. I can't tell. Um... We'll go and come back to the, to the audience here. <laughs> you can open your eyes. I have to close, I have to Use your tissues. Clean, clean my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> there you go. Oh my gosh, my whole face, my whole <laughs> neck. Oh my gosh. Okay. But you know, it's amazing how like that energy, that that memory has been stuck in there and the subconscious. I mean, even though we forget about these events, your subconscious never forgets. Our conscious mind does because it's hard to remember every single day, every second uh, of our life. But it's those moments that get triggered again. And your subconscious, it doesn't understand whether you're four, whether you're you know, 20, 30, 40, whatever it is. All it does, needs to do is associate and it's that I can just take you back to that 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 picture in your mind, and it's as if you're that four year old again reliving that experience and that feeling. Mm -hmm. So anything that brings up that concept of feeling dumb or feeling stupid, it's going to re-trigger those emotions, and that's where people tend to push away because it's a it's a not so good feeling. So okay. we want to we want to check. Um. So go ahead, so picture that. Go back to that picture in your, that you were going through in your mind. You got that? Yeah. Okay. That looks better. The concept of other emotions. I'm just going to check Veronica here. And we're just going to test on how it sounds. And you just let us know how what feels different on your end. Obviously, because we got people that are watching, so they're trying to figure out what's, <laughs> what is she feeling. So I'm okay speaking in front of 300 people on stage. I'm okay speaking in front of 300 people on stage. Good. What felt different saying that this time? I felt like um, there's like a confidence there that uh, it's really hard to explain, but it's like, I feel it to be true. I guess like, yes. Yeah, like I believe I believed what I said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess yeah, exactly. Yeah, explain. Yeah, because when we I believe we, I believe what I said, not believed. I believe what. I said. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so sometimes, like at the beginning, when you said it, it felt like kind of uncomfortable. But now, mm -hmm. saying it, you you could even by looking at you, you sound more confident just saying it, and and the tone of your voice sounds more confident as well. For those of you watching. Did you notice the difference? Say yes if you noticed that, <laughs> because that was that was great. And you know, we're just warming up too, so we're just checking our time. So we, we did that. We actually we actually did that pretty fast. I mean, when we work with people, because we can test it, we can feel it. You know, we can get to some deep issues within a couple minutes. And it depends on what the issue is. Okay, and just you know, my dogs are gonna bark because my husband probably just got home but it's not gonna get in the way so well, that's fine fair enough <laughs> we got three little ones at home too so when they bark it's like okay we put them in their cage and they're good okay okay <laughs> so we've got that one down so i want to i want to test your limit here now since we're on this subject okay so let's go up in number okay uh i'm okay speaking on stage in front of 500 people oh, excuse me i just had to burp <laughs> okay. it's just an emotional release that's great <laughs> Okay, okay, good, good. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 500 people. Let's let's say, let's go up to 2,000. Let's up the ante here. Okay. So I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 2,000 people. I'm okay speaking on stage in front of 2,000 people. Good. So we're going to work just around this real quick because sometimes we, people say I've worked on this issue, but there could be so many different angles mm -hmm. that can relate to that. So we're going to go through our, our, our surroundings. So take her through that. Um, I'm ready to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. I'm ready to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. I'm willing to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. I'm willing to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. I'm able to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. I'm able to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. Good. Okay, I'm ready, willing, and able to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. I'm ready, willing, and able to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. Good. I'm okay allowing myself to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. 
I'm okay allowing myself to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. Okay. Um, a couple, a couple more. It's safe for me to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. It's safe for me to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. And it's good for me to speak on stage in front of 2,000 people. It's good for me to speak on stage in front of 10,000 people. There you go. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? <laughs> All right. It's good for the audience for me to speak to them. Let me let me rephrase that. It's okay for 2,000 people. 10, it's okay for 10,000 people for me to speak to them on stage. It's okay for, it's okay for me to speak on stage in front of 10,000 people. Okay. I'm going to okay for them. It's okay for them, right? It's okay, yeah. So it's okay for, it's okay for 10,000 people. Start with that. It's, it's okay, okay for 10,000 people for me to speak to them, for me to speak to them on stage. On stage. Okay. It's okay for 10,000 people for me to speak to them on stage. Good. That sounds better. So we always want to look at all these different angles because sometimes someone might be okay with it. But if I say it's safe, that brings up a whole nother trigger. So that right, actually worked right. out really well for you. And I, I can see the confidence when you're saying that. Yeah. yeah. Good. I, I feel it. I feel it. Good. Yeah. Because, you know, before it's just, it's that trigger. And, uh, and this is very common. We've seen with a lot of people is, that fear of looking stupid or, mm -hmm, or looking mm -hmm. dumb in front of others. And that, you know, stems from what was taught to them or, you know, or ingrained into their mind at such a young age or, or the t teachers or the parents or the siblings always calling them stupid or dumb or you never amount to anything. Mm -hmm. And the subconscious mind believes that at such a young age. And so that's how people always will sabotage their success. If that's the program that's going on underneath. And my eighth grade math teacher told me I should never do math because I was not smart enough. Wow. Yeah. These are He's, teachers. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was back in the day, the old days. Just kidding. Back in the old days. <laughs> it still happens, though. My, my niece yeah. had a teacher like that, too. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it is what it is, I guess. Okay, so yeah. what's our yeah. next one? Uh, we got, we, we're doing good on time right so now. The, so the other one we wanted to check... Um, I'm okay being a successful speaker. Yeah, let's do that one. See if that oh, helps. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay being a successful speaker. I'm okay being a successful speaker. And that actually was probably all a part of the same category. Now the author. Now let's do the author. Okay. I'm okay being a successful author. I'm okay being a successful author. Because huh. you think about it, speaking, writing, it's all your words and your content. Yeah. And it all can yeah. represent writing or saying something possibly stupid. Right. So now let's do this. I'm okay even if I say something stupid on stage. Mm. Okay. Oh, I'm <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. Okay. I'm okay even if I say something stupid on stage. Okay. Keep going because that's already showing up. <laughs> I'm okay even if I say something stupid on stage. Okay. So the concept of resentment anger, frustration, emotionally repressed, depressed, the concept of you're depressed. How would you get a sense of a feeling of depressed if you were to say something stupid on stage? Um, I don't think I've experienced depression. So I that might not be the word as much as um, embarrassment maybe would be more of a word for me. Okay. okay. So I think that, that the feeling of, of embarrassment. Yeah, okay, like wanting to learn and Run and hide, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> but, not for a, but not for an extended period of time. Like I would get over it, you know, probably in a few hours or something. Got yeah. it. So what would make you feel embarrassed if, you know, you're on stage and you just happen to say something something stupid or dumb? Like, Why, why would that be embarrassing for you? Well, it's, it's, it's hard to say because... I feel like I embarrass myself all the time, but I don't recognize it as embarrassment. Okay. So well, once you get depressed, depressed know. is like a, it's like just I more like a, sick. like a sad or upset type of a feeling. It kind of, it's in the same realm uh, of emotional energy with like anger or frustration. Oh, okay. It, it kind of okay. goes in that same category. It's like, I'm depressed. Oh, I can't believe I just said something stupid. That okay. Kind of like kicking myself for saying something. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, for saying or not saying something. Yeah. 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 
So what's the question? <laughs> so if you, let's say we're, we're, we're playing role playing case scenario. Okay. You're on stage, you're speaking in front of all 10,000 people or more. And just, you end up saying something stupid and you, you had, you weren't even paying attention to that. And like, Oh my God, I can't believe I just said that type of a feeling. Why would you kick yourself for saying something that you would consider stupid? Because although I, although I feel like I'm not worried about being judged, I think I still have that, that fear or worry of mm. people judging me in a, in a very unkind way. Mm. It's, uh. Yeah. It's not about being judged. It's more about being judged unkindly. Yeah. <laughs> Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So that concept of that, just that feeling of the press, if you were to say something stupid, is you feel that people would judge you unkindly. Yes. And yes. so if they, and if they judge you unkindly, what about that? What about that would bother you the most? Hmm. Oh, I think that like, cause I'm thinking like back in my past and how I judged people unkindly for so long. Hmm. Mm. And how hurtful I had been to some people in my past. That feeling right there. How much pain I must have caused them, you know. Hmm. I don't want that pain brought back to me. Because you, you know what it or what it could feel like by I guess by the way they reacted or things like that, right? Yeah, yeah. First thought in them. Yeah. We don't really have to take it back because we got you in that energy right now. Just feel that and just pay attention to that. We'll do the same process. Close your eyes and you just go back and what you what you mentioned is all the people that you may have hurt for judging too harshly or and pay attention to what that feels like. That's like that depressed, sad, hurt feeling. And breathe that in. And breathe that out. Good. When that feels calmer, you can open your eyes. Yeah. And it's interesting when people sometimes don't feel comfortable um, sharing their emotions because it's not a pleasant feeling, especially if we're taking you back to past experiences. But again, it's an energy, and as, as you experience the, when you actually let it process, it doesn't last that long. I always tell people this is that hey, mm. you might, you're going to feel this. It might be hard for you to deal with this right now. But that energy can't last forever. It's like working out. You can only work out for so long before you fatigue and need some rest. That's an energy that just goes and, and it's going to be gone. It'll hit its peak and go away. And then it's processed. We'll have other layers to work on, but that's how that works. And that's what we tell people. It's like, you're going to release it and feel so much better afterwards because you finally dealt with and processed that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That one, that yeah. one was a lot faster than the first one too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially as you start releasing deeper layers, some yeah. will be heavier than others. But I want to just check this real quick while we're here. Um, so think about that for a second. Just all the people that you may have hurt and what they <clears throat> and the concept of other emotions. Okay, I'll stay with it for, for time purposes. So here's what the trigger was and the and the phrasing. I'm okay even if I say something stupid on stage. I'm okay even if I say something stupid on stage. Yeah, I mean, if it happens, like, we learn from our mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. We don't kick ourselves because we don't want to. Yours, the way your subconscious mind was r rationalizing was, if I say something stupid, people are going to judge me harshly. 
And that right. Fair for you to say, right? This time when you said it, it just came out where before it was like, it, it was almost like you couldn't say it. Yeah. This time it's more like, um, like, I don't care. <laughs> you know? you it does. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect who I am. Yeah. And that'll put you in such a vibrational alignment to go out and do it without letting the fear get in mm -hmm. the way. And the fear of what? Everybody's fear is different and for different purposes. You know, I can yeah. say you're scared of this, but 10 different people could have the same fear, but for a different reason, for a different experience that they've had in their life. And so when we do this, it's more personalized to you because this is your subconscious mind. This is your experiences. And as we, we can release that energy and it's like, okay, I'm willing to make mistakes. And that's another thing we work mm -hmm. on with people with basics is I'm okay with failure. I'm okay with making mistakes. I'm okay without being perfect or I'm okay. If, even if people judge me or criticize me or don't like me or hate me. And a lot of people that, that that's hard, especially as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. that's why a lot of, like, people have a hard time being entrepreneurs because it's going to bring up all these insecurities that we haven't dealt with. All right. Right. A person starting a, a brand new business, if, if they've never had a business before and they go into that, arena it, it will it because it's so new to them it's going to bring up all all their stuff like oh what if it doesn't work or all the what ifs and all the mm -hmm. that tie into to being an entrepreneur okay yeah wow i feel very like my um my throat feels like um raspy kind of mm -hmm. i guess that's from the emotion yes yeah. So you're releasing energy and you know, this is like a, this is the first time we really dealt with this. So we tell people that we usually will do like, you know, follow up sessions on this because you, you cleared a lot today. I mean, we did a lot just in the time that we have, and we still have a few extra minutes left mm -hmm. and we did some pretty big areas for you. And so one thing yeah. you do experience is you might feel a lot lighter right now, especially since it's energy. Mm -hmm. Some people can feel a little tired, like going through a workout and might feel even a little hot right now because it's energy mm -hmm. being released. And so sometimes when you take a nap or get some rest, you'll feel so much better the next morning. I remember when I went through a big process for myself and was releasing a lot of stuff years ago, I, that, that night, or it was in a seminar actually, and I was actually feeling like I was getting sick or coming down with a cold. I got the sore throat. I wasn't sleeping very well at night. It's like my body had to go through like an inflammation period or like a healing uh, period. But once mm -hmm. that healing period subsided in my body, I was able to process again. It's like I had so much more energy afterwards. So just pay attention to that. Um, okay. And if anything else, like with more emotion tends to show up, all that is, it's just deeper layers. That's like ready to, to kind of come to the surface and say, hey, I want to work on my on this next. So just pay attention to that if you feel that, but you might feel great afterwards. Okay. So let me ask a question related to this. Does that mean it's gone or can it surface again later? Sometimes uh, with that, the same exact thing won't come up, but something maybe around around it will. So it won't be the same exact thing, but something okay. related to the same issue could come up. So we okay. may go back, like we thought, but we went to um, old events in our life. We we could come back to the same scenario when you ran away from home a few mm -hmm. different times, but for a few different reasons, for different emotions. Because you don't just experience one emotion in an event. You experience a series of emotions. And if we just tackle one, well, we, okay, we got rid of the, let's say like that depressed sadness type of feeling, but sometimes it might show up as now, as, now I'm angry about that, or now I'm, mm. uh, I'm worried about that. It, it's like the emotions have a different energy and vibration to them. And so if we experience that, like Veronica said, is it's probably a different emotion for a different reason. And again, that's, you pay attention to that because that's your body. That's your, your soul telling you, hey, this is a trigger for me that needs to be healed. And so I embrace those when that shows up for us. Like, hey, mm -hmm. I, you know, I might not like this feeling right now, but I look at it as a blessing because it's another area for me to improve in. Okay. So if I'm watching a, a harm rock commercial and I have emotion from it, I can maybe try to figure out like what's causing that emotion and then work through it kind of. I don't know. Is that possible? Uh, maybe pay attention to, to what you're feeling and, and like do you, do you start to think of, past events that happen that resemble that or the way okay. that you feel like maybe there's something that it resembles from the past. Maybe okay. If, because if, if it does, and that, that could be the trigger. You know, I always, I always get down to, there's always a cause for everything. 
And so the big, the greatest question in the world that a lot of kids will will use a lot is why. Mm -hmm. Because of this. Well, why? Well, because of the why. You can always. That's what I'm asking you. Because I'm, like I, I get you right here, and I say, okay, well, why does that bother you? Then you say because of this. Okay, well, why does that bother you? Because of this. And then we get to your core of what it truly means to you deep and down inside. So always ask the question: Why am I feeling like this? Or what, what's the okay. I'm feeling? Oh, I'm feeling upset. Okay, why am I feeling upset? Because they said this. Okay, then you go back deeper. If I said, if they said this, why does that, why does that anger me so much? And then you'll find okay. a reason. You just keep asking the question. And then when you can feel it, you can process through that. And what we tell people is if you're in a moment of uh, just in an emotional distress, that you're upset, you're, you know, feeling sad or teary or whatever it is, mm -hmm. is just sit with that and feel that emotion and breathe through it. And, and rather than stuffing it down, let it come out and breathe through it until until it's gone. It won't last forever, and that's it, it'll be a sense of relief. Okay. Well, yeah, that was definitely very emotional. <laughs> so my eyes are kind of blurry, but <laughs> so let's let's see what we got going on here. Oh, Patty says I'm ready for my turn. <laughs> yeah, Patty's amazing. She lives in Orange County. Um, yeah, she's really amazing. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll hook you up with them, Patty. And then Patty says, Linda, you've done a lot, expended tons of energy. Great work, Veronica and Aaron. Yes, definitely. And uh, so I'll read through the other comments later. Did, was there anything else? Oh, she wants to have me uh, speak to an audience of 20,000. <laughs> oh, no, 2,000. No, it's 2,000. Yeah, yeah, 20,000. We'll go for 20,000. <laughs> I'm, I'm making it even 50. Right. <laughs> That's right. What well, was Les Brown? I think he spoke in front of 50,000 um, at the Georgia Dome. And it's like, that's an amazing <laughs> thing to do. But I guess once you get into, you know, once you get into 5,000 or so, anything beyond that, it all just looks the same. Yeah. <laughs> you can only see so many people. Yeah. Oh, Sherry Mark says she's ready too. So, so definitely. Well, well, let's talk about that, you guys. Um, I feel like a man, <laughs> I feel like I have a man voice right now. <laughs> Okay. Okay. You guys, you're, you're detoxing right now. Okay. Good. Good. I could use that. And my eyes are really, literally, they're like blurry right now. So it's really, really hard to see. Um, okay. So let's talk about. You guys have a free gift for everybody. Um, if they type the word mindset in the comments below, they have a free gift for you guys, and that's the first month free to their manifestation mindset membership program, but it's to the first 20 people who respond with their word mindset in the comments below. So why don't you tell us what the manifestation mindset membership program is? Well, we, we developed this program because uh, a lot of people, they can't, we found that a lot of people can't work with a one-on-one -on -one, and we do a lot in study of the mind and realizing that if you want to create something in your life, it all starts in here. It starts with our thoughts, our emotions, our belief systems, and also our vibration and our energy. And so with our study and our knowledge, what we put together is a, it's, it's a monthly program where we take you through these different processes and concepts and lessons that you can learn to really start to manifest the life that you want and desire by design. Like you can actually do it by, okay, if I'm attracting something that I, I if there's something in my life that I'm not really enjoying or liking, we're attracting that. If there's something that's good in our life, hey, we're attracting that. And if you can understand where that energy is coming from, and this is part of our one-on-one -on -one work like we did right now is where is your energy at and what are we attracting and what are we pushing away? So this is designed to help people really like train their mindset for success because that's where it all starts from. And it's putting them in the proper vibration because everything's vibration. So if, <clears throat> if you're in, in alignment with what you want and you're vibrating at you know anything that you want, you'll attract that. So it, it's uh, it's learning new habits and skills to to put you in in the mm. alignment to it, start attracting that. That's awesome. I love that you guys do a group program because, like you said, some people don't really want to do the one on one. So this yeah. gives them an opportunity to work in a group environment. And so, yeah, mindset it's crazy. It's just when I think I've got it all together, <laughs> I realize I don't. <laughs> We've been doing this work on ourselves, like. For years and sometimes it, it can be daily and we've gone through a lot of processes veronica and i, I mean, we've had a lot of growth and i've been blessed to have veronica to work on me i've worked on her stuff you know when you talk about personal development and i, I mentioned this on a on a show a while back that it, it's not like a 90-day challenge it's not a 30-day 21-day detox you know it's it's your life and you're constantly working on yourself understanding yourself more 
it, it's a lifelong learning process. And that's, that is the game of life is really understanding your mind and your thoughts and how this whole thing works. And again, we still have not have it all figured out, but it's a constant process. <clears throat> I wonder if we ever will have it all figured out, <laughs> you know, the human race, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. Happens, like in, in business, you, you reach a certain level, say you have a goal. Once you reach that goal, then you're going to set a new goal. So it's going to bring up other emotions, other things that need to be worked on and, and challenges because it, it it's like a new, a new zone. So then once, you know, you get here and it's like, okay, I've hit, I've hit this goal. We got to release some stuff and, you know, uncover if there's anything that's uh, blocking you, any type of resistance to help you move past that. That's so true, right? Because we have, you know, have different levels in, in life and everybody's going on a totally different path. So like two people can maybe break through the same thing, but then they've broken off into branches. And now this person has a totally different thing to work on than this person does. And, and it's just so amazing how much is out there. And like I said, you know, just when I thought I had it figured out, right, there's something else that comes up. And here's what I discovered is when I'm very comfortable, it means I'm not stretching enough and I'm not finding those things that can help me get to the next level. So that's the key to get to the next level is to confront whatever it is, like we're working with you guys, right? You confront it and, and deal with it so that you can now take that step to that next level. Because what does, we hear the terms next level all the time, but we're going to take you to the next level, take you to the next level. You know, it only takes a little tiny step to get to the next level. Yeah. It doesn't have to be big. It just has to be something something yeah. that's moving you forward. And so even taking small steps, you know, on a weekly basis or on a daily basis, that's what's going to help you to grow. And I mean, this was, a, this was an amazing experience. And I'm still blurry eyed. <laughs> I hope I don't have to go buy glasses now. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> I should be able to see more clearly, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. So how do you guys want to end the show? I mean, I, like this was really amazing. I don't even know how to end it. <laughs> oh, I know. Put your website up there. You know, they're on they're on Facebook. Go to Clear Connect K I N E C T. Go there and you know go and follow their Facebook page. You like them? They have their own show. You want to tell us about your own show? What you guys do? Sure. Uh, we have a, a Facebook live show. It's called Aaron and Veronica Live, and we we go live on Tuesdays at six p.m. Pacific <laughs> Standard Time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Thursdays at ten a.m. So we're we're gonna have a. A fantastic interview tomorrow uh, with Todd Special. Okay. Uh, if you guys haven't heard of him, he's we met him just recently, and he's another mindset. He's in he's in the sales industry, but he does a lot with mindset. Very motive. He's a motivational speaker. Um, just love the work that he does. But he's gonna have a, we're gonna have a fantastic interview with him tomorrow at ten o'clock cool. Pacific. We do that from Veronica's page, just so that's where a lot of our audience is right now as we switch over. That's where we okay. we did our interview with you, Linda. Mm -hmm. and so if those of you who wanted to jump in on that, just message us and we'll get you that feed as well. <clears throat> and then, you know, we do a lot of great content. Sometimes it's just us delivering some great content about mindset and things like people can improve on. Other times we'll have special guest speakers, um, entrepreneurs okay. that also deal with the emotional challenges. So we wanted to bring that out to people. Awesome. And you guys aren't, aren't they amazing? You guys, I just, I just love these guys. The first time I met you guys were, I was at Thrive Talks about two years ago and I interviewed you in the back room. I had no idea what you were about because I didn't get to see you speak. But yeah. when I interviewed you, it was just, I felt, I felt an immediate connection to you guys and just the powerful work you do with each other and with people. It's really amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so yeah, pop on over there, like their page. And then um, do you on your page announce when you're going live onto Veronica's yes. page? Okay. Okay, cool. And Todd's special tomorrow at 10 a.m.? You say 10 Thursday at 10? Yes, 10 a.m. Pacific time. So you guys check it out. And, and thank you guys again so much for being here. And um, I, literally, I don't know how to end this because I'm just like, I want to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> I got lots to work on. <laughs> People get addicted when they start working on this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, so you guys, again, if you are, are you interested, if you're interested in their, um, Manifestation Mindset Membership Program. Please uh, type the word mindset down below. And if you're a replay viewer, thank you much for much, so much for being here. Live viewers, thank you so much for being here. And I know I didn't address any questions that might have been there, but I really can't see very well right now. So <laughs> I have to go back in later we'll follow, and answer. <laughs> we'll follow up with you a little later to see how you're doing because we want to make sure that people comes up. So we're always here to support 
everybody after we work with you is, is we always want to support and see, hey, how can we support you further? If anything else shows up, and that's usually how we'll do things. We don't just leave people off because you know when we deal with emotions, okay. it's a very personal thing, and so we always want to make sure that we tell people that we give you the safe space to do that. And we want yeah. to congratulate you because this is not an easy thing for people to do in front yeah. of a live audience online. <clears throat> and so, I mean, that, that, that's a big step right there, breaking past the fear. And we hope you feel better after the, just the little things that we worked on today, but they're powerful things. I do. And I feel, um, I, I feel, I feel very confident. I guess that, yeah, that's the word to use. I, I just feel very confident and, um, you know, I've been doing Facebook live for so long. So why would I be fearful of, of being on a stage yeah just because it, it's in it's person different. i guess <clears throat> yeah it's a it's a different environment because i know uh you know there's not people right in front of you even though they're watching you but to be on stage it's a different energy because now yeah. you're in the same room and there it's all eyes on you so i i heard that before where it's a it's a little intimidating when when you get up there <laughs> and i'm ready I now feel, <laughs> i do feel the um the throat thing with you i think because I'm feeling feel, like, yeah, almost like when you swallow, like it's a little, um, I don't know. And what's it's interesting like too, because the throat, you know, throat chakra usually is for people when there's, there's a message or something that you want to say, but it's like, you're not letting it out. And that energy gets mm. trapped. So there could be a little bit more there, but that usually when there's people like, you know, cat got your tongue or like, I got that, I feel like I got that lump in my throat. That's mm -hmm. energy that gets like stuck. It's like you want to express something and, and something's not letting that out and that energy gets stuck. Oh, so wow. Can, you know, it might be another layer to break through to help. What is that? And we can explore that later, but we only had so much time here today. Yeah. And I can actually feel it now that you, you mention it. I can actually feel it and I probably know exactly what it is. So. Unless you want to work on it now. <laughs> That's I don't know if I can handle it. Oh, my God. You guys got four hours. <laughs> I know, right? got four, four hours to kill. Yeah, I I think I know what it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so maybe we'll do another show. <laughs> no, but I'll I'll reach out to you guys and maybe we can work on that together. Okay. Right, we'll follow up. Yeah, Sounds that'd good. be awesome. Yes, Patty, lots of emotion for sure. Like literally, like my eyes are blurry. So <laughs> it's great. I think it's a good thing. I I'm sure I won't need glasses, but <laughs> no, you won't. So, and he says, XOXO, and congrats to you, Aaron and Veronica. Yes. Thank you, Patty. Yeah. So thank you guys for being here. And again, go check out their show. Go to their page and, and like their page. And um, go watch their show. It's really amazing. They're just, as you can tell, two very just incredible people who are here to make a positive influence on this planet. And so I look forward to seeing you guys. I'll connect with you offline, okay? Fantastic. <laughs> thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye-bye.